Welcome to California in Focus. I'm Eliana Kernodal, standing in for David Mastio. And joining me today is the Center Square's California reporter, Kenneth Shrupp. How are you, Kenneth? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for joining us. So In-N-Out is closing its only Oakland location. Can you tell us more about this? Uh, Why are they closing and what's the story? Right. Uh, America's finest fast food chain is closing its first restaurant ever. Uh, They're closing their Oakland location citing crime. That's, That's really it. They are saying unrelenting crime and violence against customers and employees is the only reason they're shutting it down because the location is extremely busy and extremely profitable. The chief operating officer, Denny Warnick, said, we have made the decision to close our In-N-Out Burger location in Oakland, California due to ongoing issues with crime. Despite taking repeated steps to create safer conditions, our customers and associates are regularly victimized by car break-ins, property damage, theft, and armed robberies. So really, violence against customers and the people who work there that the city is doing nothing about drove them to shut down. This has been a growing problem in in many different cities, and we've seen various different chains closing stores. We've got another story out of San Francisco about a Safeway location that announced that it would be closing. Can you tell us more about that? Right. Uh, And to clarify, this specific location is closing because it was sold to a developer who wants to turn it into a mixed-use residential commercial space. This is a big trend across the country where various grocery stores that have been bought by investment banks are being sold to real estate developers because it's much more profitable to just sell them as underdeveloped land than it is to run them as grocery stores when there is so such a high level of shoplifting and theft and inflation, on your, your margins are just getting destroyed. So you might as well just make a quick buck by selling to developers, who, again, often do include gro- new grocery stores, albeit smaller ones, in the redeveloped spaces. So what happened here in San Francisco was Safeway was sold to a developer who wants to turn it into a lot of new housing and a lot of new commercial space. And there was national pushback for, um, about this closure. They were saying it was going to deprive a historically black community of another grocery store and of the other banking and healthcare services that a modern supermarket comes with. And what was the city's response to this and what was the outcome? Well, the city's response was first to negotiate with Safeway to see what kind of deal they could strike to keep the store open. I do believe that there probably was a planned closure and that this sale was just one way to allow Safeway to be like, look, we sold this lot, we're losing money on it. The fact that we've sold it means we can stop the bleeding here at this location. The reason that I suspect this is because Safeway did say that it would stay open through 2025 to the beginning of 2025 with the mayor's announcement that she would be sending police officers to the store. So by threatening to leave, they got to get police protection that they otherwise would not have. And I think this sets a very dangerous precedent for the city. Businesses are going to say, they, look, you can you can protect us or we're going to leave. But the city doesn't really have a lot of resources. And at the end, a lot of businesses are just going to go. Can you clarify what the situation with the developer is? Are they still planning to to redevelop this land even though the store is staying open? Is is it just open for a period of time and then it's going to be redeveloped? What's the story there? In San, San Francisco has the longest development time in the United States from when you first send in plans to the city and to when you can start construction. I think it's something like a year and a half, two years. So if the Safeway was just bought and let's just say the developer already submitted the plans. The soonest they could actually start construction is like a year and a half from now. Or at least that's what it used to be in about 2018 when I, I, I saw this last round of development timeline statistics. I, I wouldn't say it's gotten much better than that. But yeah, of course they can keep the store open a year without really impacting the development timeline because it just takes forever to get anything approved. 
something interesting here is that the city in its release did say that they're working with a new developer aligned real estate to quote find an interim solution to keep services in the area for the Fillmore community while future iterations for the site continue to be determined. I don't know what this means is going to happen during the site's construction. It's just a lot of requirements like these are what are keeping developers away because, oh, you can't disturb or change anything in the existing landscape. You're going to have to commit to all of these offsite improvements. You have to come up with a deal with the cities to you know, service the exact kind of businesses they want you to serve. It's a lot of money to the developer to have to commit well beyond the purchase price and development price of the lot itself. And Safeway isn't the only grocery store in San Francisco that closed recently due to to these concerns or considered closing in the case of Safeway. Wasn't there a Whole Foods that was closed at least temporarily? Yes, San Francisco's flagship Whole Foods has been shut down since April of last year due to concerns about employee safety and violence. There were numerous attacks on employees, and in response, the ownership Amazon said, you know what, we're just going to have to shut it down to keep people safe. The space is now up for lease, so that temporary closure is now a permanent closure. Something really notable is that, well, the entire, you know, the mayor's office, city supervisors came out to make sure that the Safeway Fillmore stayed open when this Whole Foods closed, the supervisor representing the area said he was disappointed but not surprised and that was it well thank you for your insights today kenneth uh, listeners can keep up with these stories and more at the centersquare.com for kenneth shrupp i'm eliana kernodal please subscribe and thank you for listening enjoying our podcast your reviews help other listeners find our show Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.